December 17th, next weekend, there is a Christmas carol sing at St. Joseph's. Let us prepare hearts and minds for worship. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Our first carol is number eight. It came upon the midnight clear and it is in our leaflets. <laughs>
candle of Advent has been lit. It is the candle of peace, and we lit the candle of hope. Please join me as we read and say our prayer for the Advent candle together, and it's printed in our bulletins. As the second Advent candle is lit, each of us will be filled with the peace of Christ and the desire to invite people to experience that peace during our worship service and within our church community. During the busyness of this Christmas season, we receive the perfect gift of Christ's peace through longs of reflection and prayer to the Lord. The peace of God allows us to look at others through heaven's eyes and help guide the world to see God's here and not yet here in Him. Peace from God, the biblical peace, allows us to trust in God's promises through restful, tranquil faith. Despite the dark, scary world around us, we pray. Right. So God of the peace, as the second death and candle of the peace is lit, may your peace shut our hearts and in our world. Help us to be peacemakers in our relationships and communities. When we find it difficult to think of global peace, remind us to find you, and through knowing and following Jesus Christ, we find the peace that surpasses all understanding. In his name we pray. I want to share God's word with you from John's Gospel. And Jesus had just, at this point, had been preparing his disciples for his earthly departure. And he knew it was going to be a tough time for them. And he knew that they were going to have many questions as to what was happening and what would be happening to them and why it was happening. And uh, all of these things that we might ask if we had been there. And so he tries to reassure them as John records for us in chapter 14 and beginning at verse 15. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. My peace I, need, I share with you. Excuse me. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away, and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now, before it happens, 
so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not speak with you much longer, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me, but the world must learn that I love the Father and that I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. much as I enjoy Christmas and the celebrations and all that goes on with it, I think that I enjoy this season of Advent even more. It's a time when we're <coughs> called to kind of just reflect and think about what it's all about and what it means to us. And, and uh, you know, it, it's so easy to get caught up in all the things you have to do to prepare for Christmas that you lose sight of what it's all about and why you're doing what you're doing. Today we have lit the candle of peace. This seems kind of ironic, doesn't it, that we hear so much about peace at this time of year when there are so many uh, wars going on and so many problems in our own country with homelessness and, and healthcare issues and political scandals and, and uh, you know, it just seems that it's, it's never going to end. But I think that we need to keep our focus where it should be, on Jesus Christ and his first coming and what that meant for us and even more so what his second coming means for us. One of my favorite Christmas carols is called I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Like many other carols and hymns, it was originally written as a poem. And the author was the well-known poet Henry Wordsworth Longfellow. He wrote his poem on Christmas Day, 1863. 
His country was being ripped apart while ours was about to be born a couple years, a few years later. The United States was at war with itself. Families were divided. Brother was fighting brother. It was a terrible time. Longfellow, at this particular time, was 57 years old. And he had known great tragedy in his life. His first wife died shortly after experiencing a miscarriage. His second wife, whom he had courted for many years, and she was reluctant, for whatever reason, to marry him, but he did persuade her, and he loved her dearly, and she died tragically in a fire. And so Longfellow was left as a single dad of six children. But it doesn't end there. He was badly injured in the fire and as he was trying to save his wife, and his face was so scarred that he kept his trademark beard because his face was so scarred he couldn't shave for the rest of his life. And to add to that, his oldest son was injured in the war and was nearly paralyzed. And so he had a lot to contend with. He was depressed. He was in deep despair. And no doubt he wondered if he would ever know peace, the peace that the scripture promises. <clears throat> Perhaps you've been there. Maybe you've experienced times when you just felt that you were just like for the world to swallow you up. As I said at the beginning, I really enjoy Christmas. It wasn't always that way. A few years ago, I called a friend, who is now my wife, but was my friend then, and I said, I think I want to run away. I don't want anything to do with Christmas. I'd had a, a miserable experience a year before, and, and I said, I just want to leave and go somewhere where no one knows me, I don't know anybody, and I'll spend Christmas wallowing in my misery. Well, I'm glad to say, and as you all know, things have worked out very differently for me. But at that time, I wondered, <coughs> would I ever really know the peace that the scripture promises? And maybe you've done that. Maybe you've wondered if you would ever have peace in your life. And maybe, like Longfellow, and like me, you wondered, where is God in the midst of all this? Where is God in the midst of our chaotic world? We look around us today and we see the horrible war going on between uh, Israel and Gaza and Ukraine and Russia. I read somewhere that at any given time there are 40 wars going on in our world. And so we wonder, where is peace? Maybe if you were living in a tent downtown somewhere, you might wander even more. Where is this peace that we hear about so much and we sing about so much? It seems impossible to find. Over 100 years ago, British author H.G. Wells predicted that World War I would be the war to end all wars. And yet, here we are, still killing each other. Half a million Americans died in the Civil War in Longfellow's time. Half a million. And millions more have died in wars since. And so where is the peace that God promised? How do we find it? Well, John's Gospel gives us the answer is he tells us that true peace, real peace, peace that doesn't depend on what's going on around you or your external circumstances, that kind of peace that lodges deep in your heart and soul comes from knowing the Prince of Peace, Jesus 
the Messiah. Yeah. Messiah means the promised one. And Advent means waiting, expecting, anticipation. And so as we celebrate Advent, we celebrate the coming of the Messiah. I want to take you back to the scripture I read and share with you again uh, one particular verse, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. That's the answer, isn't it? Claim that promise. And one day, the Prince of Peace will come back. And then the hope that we have now will be a reality. And all the troubles of this life won't even be a memory. But until then, we can know peace. We can know the deep inner peace that only His Spirit can give. A peace that doesn't depend on what's going on in your life. A peace that doesn't depend on the people who are in your life, because we're all human, we'll always fail. It's a peace that goes beyond our understanding, a peace we don't deserve, but it comes because of God's grace. Longfellow's poem ends in the triumphant declaration that God isn't dead, and he isn't asleep. That he will and he does give the peace that goes beyond human understanding. My Advent prayer for you is that each one of us will come to that understanding and that conclusion. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the promises in it. And Lord, we thank you that you are God who always keeps your promises. You may not keep them in the way we expect or the way we would choose or according to our timetable, but we know we can depend on you, we can rely on you. Lord, I pray that you would give each one of us the peace that you promised, that you would rid our hearts and your thoughts and our minds of anything that would hinder us from experiencing that peace. We praise you this morning for your faithfulness and we look forward to your return. We ask all in the name of Christ our Lord. Carol number 22, let there be peace on earth.
Lord Jesus, and that he himself <coughs> said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. There are spiritual, emotional, and communal benefits that come with giving. Those who give generously often find themselves enriched with a deeper sense of purpose, connection, and well-being. Let us pray. O oh Lord, accept our offerings as we have given them to you. Allow them to bring glory to you as well as others in our communities and beyond. Accept them, knowing we have given them with happy hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
We pray for peace all over the world. Where there is war, we pray that there's ceasefires. Where there is a lack of housing, we pray for solutions. Where there is hate, we pray for love. Bless us, O oh God. And as we wait for the arrival of Christ and celebrate his birth, calm our spirits and help us to stay on the path, your path. We believe and we follow you and we know that our lives are better for it. Help us to bring the message to others of peace like no other. Like no other. Hear our prayer, O oh God, as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.